Hey neighbor, here we are in November and it's getting a little chilly on us. First of November and we got down to 37 degrees last night. I think we're going to have a cold winter. Probably need it to help kill some of them bugs, but uh, you know, normally we don't have our first frost around the end of November, so it's going to be a little cool this year. But you know, we always think about gardening. We don't think about gardening much when it gets cool, but there's still a lot of things we can do. We still grow a lot of our groceries. And today we're going to be planting some stuff in containers and trays that we can put underneath our grow house so we can continue to have some some vegetables to eat on during the cold weather. Now you can grow these outdoors, but I'm gonna do it today specifically in containers and trays on a smaller scale, just to let you know how easy and how everybody should be doing it. First thing we're gonna do is just plant us some lettuce in one of these trays right here. This is one of the deeper trays that we sell as our seed starting kits here. But these things can double also to grow us some lettuces indoors. We've already got our light kits that we use for seeds starting in the spring. Hey, why not use them to grow some lettuces indoor during the winter time? And that's what we're gonna do. Now this tray right here, <clears throat> I just filled up with some good potting soil. I'm not gonna put any compost. I'm not gonna put any organic uh, compost, excuse me, organic fertilizer in this right here. It's just straight good potting soil. We're gonna plant our lettuces in there and I'm gonna fertilize this one right here using our water can and our Dr. Joe's. And that's the way I'm gonna grow these lettuces off. I got two different kind of lettuces I've grown up here. I got Starfighter, which is more of a loose leaf head lettuce and I got some Braveheart Romaine. I think I'm gonna save that Romaine to plant in my root pouch. I'm gonna plant what I got left of this Starfighter lettuce in my tray up here. Now these plants right here, or getting a little old on me. Some of the leaves are a little ragged, but you know what? Just gonna pinch them off. They'll come back out and be beautiful. They should have probably been planted a few days ago. We're gonna get them out of there <coughs> and we're gonna plant them in our tray. Now this tray right here is pretty deep and it works fine for lettuces in there. So we're gonna kind of get in here and dig around, put us these plugs in there. One, two. And one thing I figured out is you want to plant these things fairly dense because, man, keep them more than fertilized. These things will grow in a hurry and provide a lot of lettuce for our salads. Well, I don't have quite enough to fill this up, so I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to stick me a couple of romaines here at the end. I got plenty of romaines. That'll kind of mix it up a little bit. All right, these are green lettuces right here. I'll keep these things watered. Now make sure this one right here has the holes in the bottom. You want to make sure you got good drainage there. You don't want to plant them in one that don't have any holes. But we'll keep that watered right there. Hit it with our watering can with our Dr. Joe's. Dr. Joe's is just like a little Alka-Seltzer tablet. Put it in there, foams up, dissolves in the water. Makes it real easy. Now I normally fertilize these things once or twice a week real lightly there. And they'll pop and they'll grow. Hey. In just a matter of days, we're going to be cutting salad off this right here. Now this is a root pouch. I think this is a three gallon root pouch and I'm going to plant the rest of my romaine in this. Now I'm going to grow this outside, out there on the porch. You can put it on your patio, you can put it anywhere. Now I'm going to do this a little different. I'm going to take a little complete organic in my hand there and I'm going to mix this in into my soil there. You could top dress it, but I like to mix it in so it gets closer to them roots there and activate a little bit quicker. Just a decent handful to do. I'm gonna water this in before I plant, just to help it settle down just a little bit. All right, here we're gonna put, now this variety here remains called Braveheart. Paris Island's a good one, Braveheart's a good one. They several of these remains that are good. These remains is what people use for their Caesar salad. Gonna plant them pretty thick in there. Let's see how many we get in this three gallon root pouch. Look at that root system here. These are ready to be potted up. All right, so we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight plants in that three gallon root pouch. It looks like a lot, looks like it's kind of crowded. But man, these things are pop. We can almost eat some of them now. Give them a few days and we'll have plenty to eat right there. Next thing I'm planting is some Dunn Microgreens, Dunn P Microgreens. I'm using something a little different this time. I'm using this hemp fiber here that I've been testing out. I like it. 
It don't make near the mess soil does. I have to keep it, it dries out a little quicker. That's the only downside to it, but it is a lot cleaner. I've been using this for the last, oh, probably last month a lot. I like that. First thing I'm gonna do is wet it. Now make sure that your tray that you're gonna plant in is, has the holes in it. We have them with and without holes. I think I got that thing pretty wet, which is what we want. Now you done peas and your bigger seeds, such as the sunflower seeds, you wanna soak anywhere from 10 to 12 hours. So I put these in this little bowl last night, let them soak overnight. Just take them out there and kind of spread them out as even as you can get them on this tray right here. You know, the problem most people have with microgreens is they think they're too expensive to grow because most of the time you see these microgreens in the fancy restaurants. But the fact of the matter is, it's very economical to grow. It's a great way to grow your greens, be nice and healthy, and it's very inexpensive. You've already got your light kit, might as well use it. All you need is some trays and you can pick that hemp mat up on Amazon. We may end up carrying them next year or you can use soil either one. If you buy these seeds <clears throat> in larger variety, I mean larger variations, you get the cost down dramatically, just like this tray right here. I think if you buy these peas a pound at the time, I think I figured it would cost per 10 by 20 tray it's just a little over two dollars. And for two dollars, I can promise you, you get a lot off of this. Just kind of spread them around right there. Then we're gonna take a tray that doesn't have any holes and put on top. May put us a little weight there. You don't have to put us a little weight there. Leave that in there for a couple of days and it'll start sprouting and it'll start pushing this up. At that point, we'll need to take this right here off and we can put that tray underneath the grew light. And right here is what you have in seven to 10 days. I want you to look at the amount of food you have off that 10 by 20 tray there for just a couple bucks. And we need to plant our sour. This is tango sour, variety we started selling this year. And we grew them last year in containers cause we were just playing around a little bit and it turned out extremely well. I think this is a 15 gallon root pouch here, which is ideal for planting a celery in. Now my base here is the same thing, that good pot and soil there. Promix is the brand I use. I'm gonna add some good compost in there. Kind of spread it out a little bit, got some clumps in it. And I'm gonna need some complete organic. I like to mix this in as well. Give everything a jump start. And I don't have to be in no hurry about fertilizing to start with. Look at those nutrients already in there. Good handful, sprinkle it out. Kind of mix it up a little bit. And then top it off with some more of that potting soil. Break it up, mix it up. I think I'm going to water that for our plant so I can get that pot and soil a little moist. Now, celery is one of those things that likes cool weather, but it ain't, can't take the extreme cold. If it gets below 20 degrees, you can get some damage there. I'm going to plant these fairly thick in there. Maybe not as thick as what we did our lettuce, but this container with all those nutrients in there would be well suited to grow some good celery. I got some more started. I may plant a little later, but I want to go ahead and get this planted in. All right, so let's see how that turned out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight plants in that root pouch there. I'm going to water it in again. Here's some carrots I planted in root pouch all probably about two weeks ago. They're coming up nice there. So here's my strategy with these root pouches and my microgreens. You know what, I can grow these regardless of what the weather does. These containers here, I can move inside if it gets real cold, I can put them outside if the weather's pretty. Microgreens, I'm gonna grow them completely inside so the weather's not gonna mess with me there. Lettuce is right here, I'm gonna grow completely inside too. So we're gonna have good salad coming on. We're gonna have our celery going good for coming springtime be spring before we harvest that. But weather gets down below the tornadoes, just pick that root pouch up and put it inside for the night. Same thing with these carrots. Carrots is gonna take some cold weather, 
but you can put them inside if it gets to be a deep freeze and pull them back out there. Gardening, growing your own food, regardless what the weather does.